Arthur's countenance was aging. He had not rested peacefully for a long time, as the village where he lived was constantly being attacked by a werewolf. It all started when people started having disagreements with the witch, Catherine. Since then, someone had been cursed with lycanthropy.
The day after the full moon, the farmer woke up early and was getting ready for another day of work. When he realized that Cecilia, his wife, was not at home. After much searching, he found her lifeless in the forest near his home. Her body was totally disfigured. Several scratches and bruises marked the young woman's face. Her clothes were torn and soiled with blood mixed with dirt. Arthur returned home upset. He could not focus on his duties, nor give his dead wife a proper burial. He could only think of one thing. Revenge. Cecilia had been another victim of the bloodthirsty werewolf. That day he promised himself and his son, little Robert, that he would put an end to the life of that cursed being. Thank you. 
On every full moon night, he left his stone house with its dirt floor and went deep into the woods to hunt the terrible monster. But no matter how hard he tried, he never found it. Although he was discouraged, he would not give up without knowing who the killer was, even if it cost him his life. Thank you.
Fear was an inseparable companion of the residents of the small, silver village. No one liked to leave their homes at night, especially during a full moon. The flickering glow of torches and flares made people feel as if they were being followed. In addition, several corpses had been found in the forest in recent times, leaving the community in mourning. The full moon became known as the Blood Moon because it was always synonymous with death.
So Arthur made a decision that was discouraged by everyone he came in contact with. He would build a large, sturdy cage that would be placed among the trees. Then he would convince Robert to be accommodated inside, serving as bait for the monster. Nothing would happen to the boy, because the cage was very sturdy. And besides, he would be there to protect him.
Hiding behind the bushes, the peasant waited anxiously for the lycanthropy to arrive. He was prepared to face him. In one hand, he carried a pitchfork, with which he intended to delay the attack, and in the other, a sword poisoned with aconite that would be used to cut the creature's neck. He was convinced that everything would go according to plan. After much waiting, he began to be apprehensive for sleep had come. He needed to resist for Cecilia, for Robert, and for all the villagers. Without being able to resist, his eyes closed.
what had happened. He opened his eyes and forced his mind to remember the last events. Nothing came to mind. Had he dreamed that he was hunting the werewolf? No. The cage was real, and he was in it. Robert, he called, but nobody answered. Had he been captured by the beast? He screamed for help, but no one came to his aid. Terrified, he realized that in his mouth were fragments of cloth, which, by an unfortunate coincidence, were the same color as his son's clothes. Desperate, Arthur found that his weapons were outside and the cage was open. There was no one there but himself.